On today's show. That's it. We celebrate opening day traditions. Thankfully, we haven't missed a year. Tag along as the Richard Carr family celebrates 40 years in fish camp. <laughs> we also meet the Blueberry Hill Gang, walleye anglers who love the simple life. And the life and times of the homespun Happy Fisherman TV show. That's right, the wacky warmer. Minnesota Bound. Brought to you by Minnesota Select GMC Dealers. Hi everybody, Laura and I welcome you to Minnesota Bound. Walleye opener attracts more than a half a million anglers to our 10,000 lakes and rivers every year. And you know what, in darn near every fish camp, I think you'll find a story. And none better than the tale of the Richard Carr family. The fishing opener. Magical words in Minnesota, tradition, family, and more. You know where we're going, Eddie? Like, uh, stuff to unload. Arrive at resort, lug stuff to cabins. Happens every second Saturday in May. <laughs> Gotta love it. Love the stories, stories like this one. The Richard Carr family started coming here to Snowbank Lake near Ely way back in 1970. Thankfully, we haven't missed a year. I said, you know, this is really a nice area. And let's try to do this as much as we can. <laughs> Including his wife, Mary Kay, and daughters. Well, when we, Mary Kay and I first came up, Nancy was this big. Nancy, the oldest daughter, has grown up on openers. This is the first year we were up here, and this is a good story. It's a picture of my dad, and he's taking a fish off a hook, and they said it, on the back it says, Nancy got her first fish. So I've always been proud of this picture until a couple years ago. And they informed me that dad put the fish on the hook, said, Nancy, come here. <laughs> you know, it's pretty amazing. And, and at first, I, it didn't really dawn on me how amazing it is. But and I tell people about, you know, our family's been coming here close to 50 years. They're just like, oh my gosh, I so want a tradition like that. It's usually not even like a question for most families if they're gonna make it up or not. It's kind of just, it's already like set in stone that they'll be here. Just something you just have to do. From the day we drive out of here to the day we come back in, that's you know all we think about all year long. It's, it's, we love it. Sometimes romance happens on opening day. Dick's granddaughter, Megan, uh, I've been dating her for quite a while when we came up and I proposed to her just around the corner in, in one of the bays. This is, uh, it's got a special spot in both of our hearts here for sure. Tis the night before opener. Time to gather around the campfire. Tradition. 48 years from now, we'll still be doing it. Yeah. Cheers. 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 Finally, it's here. Like Christmas Day with presents below the tree, opening day brings anticipation and hope for something to catch below the boat. Kind of what we wait for all winter, you know. Another daughter, Karen Roshan, joins her dad in the boat. So this is my 46th year. I've maybe only missed one year. And it's funny because like now my kids are like, you know, oh, we're going. Like, you know, they want to stay all week. They think they can miss school for a full week. And I was like, ah, oh, no. Your mind just clears when you're up here. You just are just so relaxed. There's nothing, nothing to think about. <laughs> just peaceful. Not when there's a fish on the line. It's a lake trout. That's it what she's all about. 
I hope someday when I'm gone, I, I hope they keep the tradition going. Oh, absolutely. Till the day I die, no matter what, this will be a place that uh, every year will keep coming. It's what keeps the family going. This is what we look forward to every single year. A Minnesota opener. Tradition. Everybody look, smile. The monster! Up next, meet 84-year-old Earl Hetherington, a walleye angler who never misses opening day. Minnesota Bound is brought to you by Minnesota Select GMC dealers, Alumacraft, Radco Truck Accessories, and by Kinetico. For so many families, walleye opener is like a holiday. Take the camp called Blueberry Hill, for instance. That's right. Travis Frank introduces you to this Lake Vermilion legacy running more than half a century. When Minnesota's fishing opener rolls around, don't be alarmed if you hear shots fired near Lake Vermilion's North Shore. It's just the Hetherington family taking aim at another opening day. Oh. Earl Hetherington entertains. They don't miss very often. Really good. Eight out of 10. Welcome to Blueberry Hill Camp, a small family cabin loaded with personality. So again, kind of a primitive cabin, right? It's a plywood cabin, and, and uh, but that's part of what we like. It's not fancy, it doesn't have all of the modern conveniences, although we're very comfortable. Photos stuck to these plywood walls tell their story. This is Louis, Louis Wimmer with uh, a giant muskie, and you can see the old cars, and, and uh, so fun to look at the roots and that history as well. A history that takes them back to the early 1960s. My dad and I put the foundation in, which is nothing more than solid concrete blocks set in the sand. And so in 1964, we built the cabin and the two bedrooms, a living room and a kitchen. We had a hand pump over the kitchen sink for water. And in 1987, we got electricity and we added on to the front porch here. In that is where it stands today. It's less about abundance and it's more about kind of unplugging. What they lack in amenities, they make up for with heart. For me, it's, it's that remoteness. It's, and of course, the tradition and the camaraderie, hard to beat. Beneath a moonlit sky, another fishing opener has arrived. Earl, Lee, and Will make up three generations that all share one goal. To beat their fellow campers in their annual opening day fishing derby. Nice one. First caper, man. First fish opener, man, I can't think of anything better than catching a big walleye. We have prizes, sometimes big, sometimes not. Earl fishes for bragging rights. <laughs> good job, good job. Parsons is getting nervous. You guys got a fish in the boat yet, Mikey? <laughs> Today, walleyes come quicker than Earl's one-liners. I won't be able to eat if I don't catch a fish. Ah, the monster! Well, a fish is a fish. But he's the first to admit, fish are just a bonus. This is a good place, and there's uh, good people. Oh! <laughs> this is a place where friends become family and this family stays connected. I kind of cherish the time that I get to spend up here with them. 
Spending time with my grandpa and my dad has definitely been a big deal. We have a common bond and yeah, that's rich for us for sure. What do I want to see this place become? Just the way that it is right now. Three generations together in a plywood fish camp nicknamed Blueberry Hill. Coming up, we get a sneak peek inside Minnesota's new laboratory dedicated to fighting invasive species. Closed captioning is brought to you by Minnesota Rebat. Up next, Ron Shera goes behind closed doors at Minnesota's Invasive Species Research Center. It's an office with a pretty tough task ahead. Inner sanctum here. In Minnesota's fight against invasive species, this is the war room. Or more accurately, the Aquatic Invasive Species Research Center created in 2012 at the University of Minnesota. Director Nick Phelps, you could say, is the war commander. Our mission is to develop science-based solutions to control invasive species. We have about 40 researchers affiliated with the center now, working on a variety of projects. This is a collaborative effort, all bringing resources to bear on our invasive species problems here. What keeps me awake at night is just the constant drive for finding a solution. And this is something I know is attainable. We're smart, we've got a lot of people working on this in really, really good ways, but it's gonna take a while. Such as solving big threats from tiny creatures. So this is ground zero for zebra mussel research. This is where we can bring zebra mussels back to the lab and safely hold them. So what we see here, these are replica um, live wells that we have, and they have the, the same types of pumps, the same types of insulation, everything that you'd find in the back of your boat. So nothing's getting out of this room that isn't treated and killed. This allows us to do quite a bit of controlled environmental research in the lab. A lot of people would say, just forget about them. They're, they're here, move on. I say we can't give up. And there are plenty of other lakes in Minnesota. Right now there's about 125 or so that are infested. That leaves thousands uninfested. And we have to stay determined. I want some answers. You still, you still can't tell me how zebra mussels are being transported in, in boats and motors. I would love to have all the answers very quickly, but unfortunately it's just science often is an incremental step towards the answer. Um, so we're making progress, I, no doubt about that. We're getting closer to those solutions. That silver bullet is out there and we're marching towards it. The war on carp in Minnesota has been a long battle. What do we have in here again? So these are uh, common carp. Maybe one of Minnesota's uh, most overlooked invasive species, but causes immense ecological damage. Um, has the ability to turn a lake turbid very quick. Sadly, other invasive carp now are also approaching Minnesota. So an invasive carp, the silver and the big head, those the silver carp are the ones that jump, swimming upstream from uh, up the Mississippi River. We're working on using the lock and dam structures to our advantage. We can control those gates so the fish can't swim through that moving water, and then the locks where the ships go, using sound or bubbles as a deterrent to push those fish back. While the war on European carp may be turning in our favor, seems there's always another battle ahead. This is starry stonewort, Minnesota's newest invasive species. Yeah. Is that being spread by boats, you think? Primarily by boats. Where'd it come from? It probably came over in ballast water. And is it moving first in the St. Lawrence River in New York and moving west since then? It's actually not, uh, not a plant, it's an algae. Um, so we've got ourselves a, a challenge with this species in particular. Wow, never ends. Spiny water flea, where are we at there? Spiny water flea, so it's a small little zooplankton invader. I'm seeing about uh, 40 or so lakes, I think, in Minnesota right now. We're trying to figure out where it's come from, and then we're also prioritizing the types of gear that move it around so we can more strategically stop the spread. 
In addition to research and testing, the center has another weapon at its disposal in the fight against invasives. It's called optimism. All these species have had a couple decades head start. I grew up here in Minnesota. I love these lakes. I, this is why I went into this field, and it's to protect them. I'm driven personally and professionally to find a solution, and uh, I won't stop until we do. How's it going today, Jimmy? Up next, a look back at a Minnesota-bound classic. We hang with the happy fishermen. Minnesota Bound is brought to you by by the yard maintenance free outdoor furniture, Running Aces Casino and Racetrack, Bent Creek Golf Club Eden Prairie, and by Totem Resorts, the premier destination for world class fishing. Hey anglers, it's time for the annual Minnesota Bound Crappie Contest Saturday, May 19th on Lake Minnetonka. Grand prize in a Lumacraft boat trailer and Evan Rude outboard. You must enter to win. Details online at mnbound.com or at participating Mills Fleet Farm stores. Fish on! Today's Minnesota Bound Classic takes us to opening day with our competition. Of sorts. It's time for you to meet the crew of the Happy Fisherman Show. In the quiet Wisconsin town of Cornell. Can I get another? <laughs> Steve Burkholz and buddies will be set up on the banks come the morning of Wisconsin's Walleye Open. Whiskey. For good reason, too. Oh, nice one. Woo. Happy fisherman. <laughs> Yes, happy fishermen. Just listen. <laughs> ah, this is Steve Burkholz, steak bait Burkholz from the Happy Fisherman Show. My handle is Jay Busby. I'm Randy R. Crankbait Gibb. Again, I'm the uh, Happy Fisherman Show safety director and pageant director. Okay, this story takes a little more explaining. See that darn video camera? How's it going today, Jimmy? And Steve is all about you know, if these people on TV can have these professional fishing shows, well, so can we. We'll just grab a video camera, go out in the boat, and make, make fishing video. Hey, and welcome back to another adventure of the Happy Fisherman Show. Yep, Steve decided the guys should document their annual fishing opener trips by shooting their own fishing show. Dave Mental Muskie Gibb is here with us this weekend. We're glad to have him from Mora, Minnesota. The show comes complete with characters, even props to match. The almost patented bullhead oil is now coming out in two new sizes. Everybody wants to be on TV. Everybody wants to be on radio. You know, uh, and, and because we have this fictitious show, everybody wants to be included. And it's kind of a neat bonding glue kind of a thing. This is uh, the 20th and this is the anniversary. We got quite a crew. They've been shooting their spoof show 20 years straight. There's not a lot of people that can say that they've had that much fun for that many years. <laughs> <laughs> this is exactly what fishing's supposed to be all about. In a word, fun. Randy's got a big one. That's what the Happy Fisherman Show is all about. <laughs> it is fun. We got Happy Fisherman Raft. David, you can go out and get it for me. Guess this is when you need the bigger net, huh? Woo! The show is about friends and family and uh, it's just a vehicle. And just like that, 20 years in the books. Hey, welcome back, folks. And on tape. It's not the fish you catch. It's not the places you go. It's who you're with. And thank you, Bill. Thank you. Long ago, lumber put the town of Cornell on the map. And then what do we do with the gym? That's right, the waxy warmer. The happy fishermen vowed years ago to someday put it on TV. It appears, goal accomplished. Listen, we've had a great time here uh, in Cornell, Wisconsin. We want to thank everybody that made this show possible, the Happy Fishermen. Those guys are a hoot. Yes, they are. Hey, don't forget to drop us a line if you have a great family opener story. We are always looking for great tales. And that wraps it up for us today, but we'll be back next week. In the meantime, don't forget to introduce a kid to the great outdoors. Transportation provided by Premier Transportation. Call 1-800-899-7433.
To get more Minnesota Bound, including full episodes, go to mnbound.com. And to follow our latest adventures, like us on Facebook.